Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about night driving. Night driving is one of the things that they do not teach you in driving school or in preparation for a road test, but it is a fundamental skill that you're going to need after you get your license. So stick around. That's what we're going to talk about today. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there Smart Drivers, welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about night driving and this week in preparation for night driving we have the Smarter Driver course on sale over at the Smart Drive Test website for $17. Look down in the description there and you can pick that course up on sale for $17 this week which will help you become a smarter driver, help you drive at night and all of the other skills, techniques and abilities that you need to be a uh, safe driver to remain crash free and make sure that you're in good standing after you get your license. So if you're just tuning in here, uh, let us know where you're from in the world, what class of license that you're going for. You can see this week I don't have any marks on my face for jiu-jitsu, unfortunately. Uh, I think my face is starting to toughen up here a little bit. So yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. So just let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know uh, what class of license you're going for. Anything that we can do for you, answering questions in terms of your license and whatnot, and be more than happy to help you out. And Tommy is here from Oshawa. Michael is here from California. And Jonathan is here from New York City. And Jonathan is very helpful in terms of answering questions for people. And Corey will be here. He just texted me and said that he was going to be a couple of minutes late. So he'll be here. There's Corey. He's not even late. So look at that. Awesome. And uh, Lucky's here. Corey is Bricks for Wheels. He is the moderator and keeps everything running smoothly here and gets up any videos that I suggest for you to have a look at. Uh, keep it from Florida. Amanda, thanks for all your tips. I recently got my license again for five years of not driving. Thanks. And Amanda is from Missouri. Congratulations on getting your license. That is absolutely excellent. Uh, Nomina is in New York and getting an A license, uh, a tractor trailer license. That's really great. Uh, GZ, I passed my driving test two days ago in a first attempt. Thank you so much for your videos. It really helped me a lot. That is really great. It's really awesome when I hear that people are preparing for their license. People have been successful in passing the road test and are getting on with all of this. And if you have passed your road test, think of passing your road test kind of like getting a black belt in martial arts or what else do I need to say? It's, it's kind of like it's a minimum standard and there's a lot more to learn on the other side. We sort of think that we get to a certain point. It's kind of the other analogy that I was trying to think of was a PhD. You know, we, we get PhDs and we don't realize that there's so much to learn on the other side that the PhD is just kind of a minimum standard as an entry into a field that you're going to study for the remainder of your life. And for most of you with driving, you're going to study this for the rest of your life. You're going to be driving for the rest of your life. And there's a lot of skills, abilities, and techniques that you know you may not encounter for a year, five years, ten years down the road. And then one day you're like, oh my God, what happened? So this course, this defensive driving course, this what I call the Smarter Driver course, it makes you a smarter driver. It helps you out, gives you options, gives you skills, techniques, and abilities, and maybe some things that you may not consider. And the more information we have, the more knowledge we have, the better, safer, smarter driver you're going to be. So definitely check that course out over at the Smart Drive Test website and get more information. And the other thing I will say about all of my courses for Smart Drive Test, they're all completely guaranteed. If you're not 100% satisfied within 60 days, drop me an email, I'll refund your money 100%. There's absolutely, if you're not satisfied, we'll give you your money back, okay? So, ADCO is here. Uh, Bachelors, <laughs> gum, yes, bachelors, but also PhD. I have a PhD and let me tell you, I am learning every day in my field of teaching people how to drive and, and, and those types of things. There is still so much to learn. I know that from a bachelor's degree to a PhD, you would think that there isn't much to learn on the other side of a PhD, but in fact, there is a lot to learn. It's the same thing when you get a black belt. A lot of people think that when you study a martial art and you get a black belt, that that's it. There is so much learning on the other side of that black belt and particularly uh, people in martial arts, just sticking with that analogy for a moment, uh, you know, people who study, who go on to be black belts, many of them go on to open their own school and there is a lot of learning uh, going on after that. So it's the same thing with defensive driving. 
uh, you know, and learning how to drive and continuing to improve your skills, especially for people who go on to get a, do a career in driving as a CDL driver, whether they're a bus or truck driver, there is a lot of learning that goes on after you get your license. And, you know, some people say who are truck drivers, professional truck drivers, there's always something to learn every day. So without further ado, we're going to get over to the PowerPoint presentation and I'll certainly answer any questions that you have about a road test, any questions you have about defensive driving any questions you have about uh, air brakes, CDL license, driving, getting a job, <laughs> anything we can help you out with here. So that's really great. Uh, Lunette, keep up the good work. Excellent. Gum says that uh, he or she can't see at night and will hopefully we'll give you some skills and techniques to be able to see better at night. Uh, America, God bless you. Thank you again for your time and videos. And America, you're most welcome. I'm glad I can help out. And Adco, still like your uh, quality teaching. And ADCO is in Wyoming, have a class, uh, hazmat tanker and doubles, so it has all of those endorsements. Congratulations, that's really great in terms of getting all of that extra information. Uh, Corey says the traffic was fortunately forgiving on the way back, so that's excellent. Hopefully you didn't speed, Corey. <laughs> uh, okay, so without further ado, uh, Coor, always something to learn every day. Yes, indeed, and that's what makes life so grand is the, the learning uh, aspect of it. So without further ado, I'm going to get over here to the presentation, so just bear with me here. And there we go. So Night Driving, Rick August, PhD, that is me. I didn't don't think I introduced myself, but that's who I am. And uh, we're going to talk about night driving and uh, new playlist, defensive driving information. Have a look at this playlist. It's featured on the front of the YouTube website, or the YouTube uh, Smart Drive Test website page here. So you can see that, and there's 10 techniques for you to remain crash free. And if you're just a new driver and just got your license, definitely have a look at that playlist as well. Uh, and that will help you out in terms of remaining crash free, remaining safe, and things that you might want to consider. And one of the main points that I'll talk about in terms of after you get your license, uh, don't don't stay with the don't stay with the posted speed limit. One of the things I advocate for students, new drivers with a license, after you get your license, not when you're working towards your license. I just want to make that point very clear. Stay with the traffic flow. Drive the speed of the traffic flow. <coughs> Excuse me. So have a look at that playlist. Uh, for those of you who might be new to the Smart Drive Test website, uh, my name is Rick August. I do have a PhD. I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s. Early 2000s, I drove for Greyhound uh, and one of the regional bus lines there in uh, Australia, and, uh, Victoria, Australia. That's what I was trying to think of. I've been a licensed commercial driving instructor since 1997, so I've been doing this for quite a while now, and uh, the YouTube channel now for about three and a half years. In 2006, I graduated from the University of Melbourne in Australia with a doctorate in legal history with a specialty in policing as it relates to traffic. So I have experience not only in commercial vehicles, air brakes, uh, cars, passenger vehicles, and those types of things, but I also have experience driving professionally on both sides of the road. So uh, Australia, for those of you who may or may not know, drives on the left side of the road. So I have experience on both sides of the road and driving. And yes, I did have a couple of indiscretions there. And if you want to <laughs> have a look, know that story, Corey will put the video up for you on driving on the other side of the road. For those of you who might be venturing on international travel, whether you're coming from the UK or Australia to America, or you're traveling from the United States to Malaysia, Australia, the UK, are the, all these countries that do in fact drive on the left side of the road. So if you've passed a road test in the last couple of weeks and been successful on that and haven't signed up for the 100K campaign, please head over to the website, the Smart Drive Test website and put uh, and sign up for that. Corey will put up the video for that, or the, the link for that rather, and you can head over there. All right, so night driving is intimidating and there's a reason that it is intimidating uh, we lose as drivers approximately half of our ability to see at night uh, and as one smart driver said some year, a couple of years ago driving at night is like driving on a different planet and i cannot agree more with that statement because very familiar roads very familiar places are going to look very different in the absence of ambient light in, in not in daylight right and our eyes are attracted to light and movement so we to be able to see as drivers we rely heavily on light daylight so at night when we're relying on ambient light from street lights from our car lights and those types of things it can be a very different 
set of skills that you were relying on to be able to navigate properly. And the farther you get away from urban landscapes, from the city and out into the country on highways and those types of things, especially, you know, remote highways in the in the country in rural areas it's going to be much more difficult to see and you're going to rely much more on the headlights of your vehicle and I can tell you right now from all of the years of experience that I've been driving and Gum said that in the comments there at the introduction when we were talking that he or she has difficulty seeing and it's because the low beams are very ineffective to provide light at night you really need the high beams especially if there isn't any other light around Many of the main highways are going to have street lights and those types of things at intersections and curves and whatnot that's going to help you see at night. They're going to have reflective markings. The road markings, uh, you know, in the summertime when they've been freshly painted, have glass in them that's reflective. And there's all kinds of other uh, infrastructure along the roadways that's going to help you be able to see. So we'll, we'll point out a few of those tips and techniques that are going to be help you to be able to see at night. But for many of us, driving at night can be intimidating. And even for me, after all the years of experience that I've had driving at night and driving trucks and buses, I still find driving at night can be a little bit disconcerting at times, especially if I get tired. Uh, it can be especially disconcerting. So if you haven't seen this video already on night driving, uh, have a look at that tips, uh, strategies, and techniques to drive in the dark, and I, I go through specifically, and I actually take you for a drive through the city and out into the country and point out some of the things that you should be looking for while you're driving at night. And again, as I said, and I'll re reiterate this point a couple of times throughout the presentation, the farther you get away from cities, the more reliance you're going to have on your headlights of your vehicle. And those headlights, especially on low beam, are a poor substitute for light. Okay, so what, you're, what I realized a few years ago, I was training drivers uh, to drive truck, and one of the things we would do is we'd take them out on a highway drive, and uh, oftentimes I would like to take them out at night, and I realized very quickly that one of the things that drivers were not able to do was able to find the road at night. It wasn't that they had an, had an inability to be able to drive, they could drive just fine. It was the fact that they could not find the road and I started coming up with tips and strategies and techniques to help drivers be able to find the road at night because that's really the key is being able to find the road. So one of the things you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find where the curves are in the roadway and as you get fewer and fewer lights, obviously you're going to have to drive to the conditions of the roadway and you're going to have to slow down a little bit, particularly as you rely more on your low beams. The other thing that you're going to have to do at night is you're going to have to manage your sleep. You're going to, if you're tired, that makes it even harder, uh, especially if you're driving after midnight, sort of between midnight and 5 a.m. Uh, at night. You may need to pull over and get some sleep in a rest area or whatnot. Just put the seat back and get 20 minutes or half an hour. If you have to nap, then do so. Uh, the other thing, you know, all of the other techniques that they talk about, drinking coffee, opening the window down, singing to the radio, none of that helps. Absolutely none of that helps. If you do have somebody to talk to, if you have a passenger in the vehicle or you have a hands-free set and you can talk to somebody on a cell phone, that will help. That, In my experience, that has helped to keep awake. Uh, the other thing that will keep you awake is eating. And, you know, for some of you who may be health conscious, you know, don't eat potato chips and junk food and Twinkies and those kinds of things at night. Uh, one of the things I used to do when I drove truck was... Uh, I would keep a five pound bag of carrots down beside the seat and I would eat carrots at night and that's what would keep me awake while I was driving. Of course, I drank a lot of coffee too, so that didn't help because then you got to pull over to go to the toilet. So uh, the most dangerous uh, time of day to drive is sunset and sunrise and yes, this does tie into night driving and the reason that this is most dangerous and you can see this acutely in this picture here is that our eyes are adjusted to the bright sky but there's a dark landscape and cars, especially if they don't have their headlights on and bicycles and those types of things can hide in the dark landscape. So know this if you're driving at sunset and sunrise and we all know when sunset and sunrise is anymore. You just look at the weather app on your phone. It will tell you when sunset and sunrise is. And as one person, uh, one of the smart drivers pointed out here in the comments at the beginning, uh, they're driving to hockey practice and it's always dark. And especially here in the winter time uh, in the Northern hemisphere right now, it's it's dark it's dark at five o'clock it's dark until eight o'clock in the morning so you have a very short window of daylight so a lot of times you're going to be driving in the dark and know that sunset and sunrise is going to be the most dangerous time now 
anybody who does military maneuvers, uh, night maneuvers, you're going to learn that you have to protect your night vision. At night, what happens is our pupils dilate to allow more light into our eyes so we can see better. Uh, and you need to protect that night vision so that you can see better looking out the windscreen. The problem with that is that the dash lights on most of these new vehicles, <laughs> you look at them and it looks like a carnival lit up on the dash because they're all different colors. They're blue, they're orange, they're red, they're yellow. Uh, you want to turn the dash lights down to as low as you can tolerate them. And when I was driving CDL, when I was driving truck, uh, driving bus, I would turn the dash lights down to the almost being off. Because most of the time when I was driving on freeways at night, I would be on cruise control and I could just listen to the vehicle and I knew whether it was running right or not. So I just turned them down and then that way that would reduce strain on my eyes, would reduce distractions, and it would allow me to concentrate out the wind window and it would not deteriorate or erode my night vision. So that's another thing you want to be able to do is turn down your dash lights at night. And Corey will put up the video for you on secondary controls on vehicles and that will uh, show you how you can do that uh, with the controls there on the, on the dash. So as I mentioned in the introduction, the farther you get away from urban areas, the more you're going to rely on your headlights of your vehicle. Fortunately, in this day and age, not so much in the wintertime because road markings become worn off due to plows and those types of things. But in the summertime, uh, their road markings and they're reflective because they put glass in the paint. Uh, you're going to have to use your high beams as much as possible. Uh, you're going to look for reflective uh, reflectors and those types of things that is very much part of our road structure look for lights down the roadway houses along the roadway and those types of things all of that is going to help you to find the roadway and as you can see here in this image you can see the roadway is curving around to the right here and you can see that because you can see the night sky up through the trees so this is another way that you can find the roadway at night is to look up at the sky and figure out where the roadway is being cut through the woods or whatnot so look for houses along the roadway because lights are going to mark where the roadway is. Look for intersections because you can see the cross traffic. So you can see traffic coming down a cross road for some distance at night because you're going to be able to see their headlights and you're going to be able to figure out where an intersection is. So look at the other traffic. Now for those of you who can't see like gum at night, <laughs> having trouble with that, follow the other traffic. For the most part, 99.9% .9 of the time, the other traffic is going to drive on the roadway. So follow the other traffic uh, along the roadway because, as I said, most of the time the other traffic is going to drive on the roadway and it's going to be your best indicator of being able to find the roadway at night. Outline of the geography, as I said, you can see the roadway here going through the trees. So you can look up, where is the curve of the road? Is it curving to the right or is it curving to the left? And if you can see the silhouette, you can see the night sky through the tops of the trees where the trees have been cut out to make way for the roadway. You can see it curving to the right, you can see it curving to the left. And when you know that it's curving to the right or left, then you wanna look through the trees to see oncoming cars, the lights of the other cars, because you can see them twinkling as they're coming, as they're moving, and you can see them as they're moving through the woods and those types of things, so you know whether there's a car coming or not, or those types of things. If it's absolutely pitch dark, there's no moon, there's no sky, and it's really, really dark, and you're on a backcountry road somewhere where there are very few houses, very few reflective surfaces, and those th types of things, you're just gonna have to slow down as much as you can and put your, uh, your headlights on high beam. And if you do switch out your headlights, you might consider, if you're doing a lot of night driving, to improve the quality of your lights. You can get some Nighthawks and those types of things, which will really help you out at night if you're doing a lot of night driving. All right, now the other thing that I mentioned uh, was putting the vehicle on cruise control. And I used to drive a lot of freeways when I was driving truck and driving bus. And I would put the vehicle on cruise control. And cruise control really reduces distracted driving because one, it eliminates you monitoring how fast you're going. If the speed limit is 100 kilometers an hour, which is 60 miles an hour, you can simply put the cruise control on 60 miles an hour, turn your dash lights way down, almost to them being off, and then that is one less thing that you have to monitor while you're driving because you know that the vehicle is just gonna run along at 60 miles an hour. And uh, you know that you're probably not gonna get a speeding ticket because you're not, you're not your speed's not going up and down and those types of things. And when you're on multi-lane highways, this is definitely something that I would encourage you to do to 
reduce distracted driving and be able to find the roadway and whatnot. And stay in the right hand lane unless you're passing. Now, the other thing that I do late at night, usually between midnight and 5 a.m. in the morning with very little traffic on roadways, we have a lot of those here in British Columbia, the connector between Kelowna and Merritt, British Columbia, the Trans Canada Highway across to Vancouver. Uh, I will generally run on the center line of the two lanes. And uh, unless you're very comfortable looking in the rear view mirrors and watching other traffic and those types of things, I wouldn't advocate you doing it. But it is one of the things that when you're tired, you just run up the center line and also, for animals on the roadway at night, this gives you a lot more space to move left or right if there is an animal and you do encounter an animal on the roadway. So that's something else that you can do. It's a very advanced technique uh, that you can do when you're driving on freeways at night that are not well traveled. Okay, as I mentioned in the introduction, Corey put up the link for the Smarter Driver course, the defensive driving course over at the Smart Drive Test. It's on sale for $17. It's regular $42.50 and it uh, you can see the link there and it will give you a great deal of skills, abilities and strategies to reduce your fear and anxiety, reduce the chances of you being involved in a crash. So you can have a look at that and what I'm going to do is I'll just switch over here uh, and go through. So this is the course over at the Smart Drive Test website, the Smart Driver course. And there is a video here that you can watch, it was one of the previous live streams. Who should take the course? Beginners wanting an introduction to defensive driving, experienced drivers looking for a refresher, and all drivers in between that want to know the inherent risks of driving and implement strategies to be safe. And as I said, 90 day guarantee. If you're completely not 100% satisfied, drop us an email, we'll, no questions asked, refund your money. So this is essentially the lessons that are involved here in the course. Uh, the first one, avoid common crashes. So we go through the different types of crashes. Uh, uh, head-on crashes, sideswipe crashes, rear-end crashes, and T-bone crashes and talk about strategies and techniques you can put in place to avoid those. Backing and reversing safely, uh, we show you how to do that. Know your intersections, how to turn correctly, how to see at night in inclement weather. Uh, don't be a distracted, drowsy, or debilitated driving. We talk about distracted driving, drugs and alcohol, and driving tired. Okay, and in getting to an unknown destination with route planning, and I believe that route planning is one a huge factor that is not taught in driver education. So these are the different lessons that, uh, in the course that you can look at uh, over here, and just click that link down in the description there, and uh, that will give you more information about the course that's on sale for seventeen dollars. All right, so if you passed a road test in the last couple of weeks, good luck, on, uh, congratulations on that. And remember, if you're going for a road test or going for your learners, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. So that's the presentation. Thank you so much for that. Uh, there we go. Transition back over here, and we will answer any questions you may have. There we go. Amanda, do you have any tips for people with uh, stigmatism for night driving? I recently found out that we see lights at like an angle and I didn't realize lights are always, always look so much brighter. Yes, one of the things you can do, Amanda, is oftentimes when you have street lights down the road, they're gonna run down the road in kind of a line and you'll be able to see those, that line of street lights as you're looking down the roadway there. And have a look for those and see if you can find those markers because it's not going to matter too much if you're if they're on an angle for you, okay? You're going to be able to mark that out and you're going to be able to see the lights. And the other thing that I will stress again is look for the other traffic and follow the other traffic because as I said, 99.9% .9 of the time the other traffic Amanda is going to um, be on the roadway, okay? So have a look at that. All right. I don't know what's happened to my comments here. <laughs> Uh, just bear with me here. I need to refresh the page here because my comments aren't coming up. There we go. Okay, so Corey's got those videos up. Thanks for that. Okay, uh, very few people wear night vision glasses, okay? There's no evidence to sh support that night vision glasses work. I don't see a lot of truck drivers wearing night vision glasses and if they did what they purported they would they were doing then you would see a lot more professional drivers using night vision glasses but um, unfortunately I, d I don't see a lot of uh, support or evidence for night vision glasses helping improve. 
Uh, one of the other things that I failed to mention in the presentation was is that in order to protect your night vision when other traffic is coming from the other side you want to be looking down at the outside edge of the roadway so for those of us driving on the right we want to be looking down to the right side of the road for other people in the world who are driving on the left side of the road you want to be looking down to the left out edge of the road that way it's going to protect your night vision and you're not going to be looking right into the glare of oncoming traffic especially with some of these new high you know really vibrant LED lights and those types of things because they are very very bright at night okay um, Damien no I don't think night vision glasses are worth it actually you know Damien I think that would make for a good video is to get a few pairs of night vision glasses and see if they actually work for you okay so June is turning in from Michigan hello June Muhammad I had my CDL six months ago. I am over the road and I enjoy it. And I am learning something every day. Thanks for your videos. It is still great help for me now. That's excellent, Muhammad. Congratulations on your uh, CDL license. Which company are you working for, Muhammad, driving over the road? Okay, Jonathan, uh, do not drive at night with your headlights off. It's illegal and can be dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jonathan, I definitely don't recommend that. And that on just on that note, Jonathan, uh, not in the states there, I know, but here in Canada, all vehicles. Oh, I think it's I don't know the year, but anyway, we've mandated that all new vehicles have daylight running lights. So for Canadian drivers and other countries in the world that in fact do have daylight running lights on your vehicle, make sure that you have your headlights in fact that they are on <laughs> when you're driving at night. Now I know most of the newer vehicles have an auto feature on the switch for newer vehicles that the, the, uh, the headlights will just turn on automatically but don't be duped by your daylight running lights that in fact your lights are on make sure that you actually turn them on uh, Jamie Rockstar I get annoyed with other drivers at night blinding me in my rearview mirror so I flip the mirror up yes and that's another good point Jamie excellent I didn't mention that uh, for those of you who are new to driving you may or may not know you haven't watched the video yet there is a switch on your rearview mirror that angles it up because otherwise if there's traffic behind you and they, have, they forget to turn their high beams down uh, or they're driving really close to you uh, you're gonna get a lot of glare off that rearview mirror so you can flip that switch and that will reduce the glare in the rearview mirror and will help you out and help you to pre preserve your night vision so have a look at that and just use that at night so that you can reduce the glare coming up from vehicles behind you uh, Okay, so Mike, I uh, passed my CDL job because it was 100% night driving. These tips help and may give me the courage to take the position. Yes, Mike, you're going to do great. Uh, looking for the road at night, that's really going to help you out. Um, night vision devices, Nomina, what, when you say night vision devices, what do you mean by night vision devices? Now, the other thing that I, didn't, I did kind of touch on in the presentation, I talked about animals on the roadway at night. And I've had a couple of <laughs> a couple of experiences uh, with animals, and I have hit animals in the vehicle. So the truck, I was running office furniture from Cambridge, Ontario, into Grand Rapids, Michigan. Grand Ma Rapids, Michigan, for for those of you in the states who may or may not know, is is nicknamed the furniture, and the reason it's the furniture is because it's Steelcase's headquarters. Steelcase is the leading manufacturer of office furniture and that's where their headquarters is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's about a 13 hour round trip from Cambridge, Ontario down to Grand Rapids, Michigan. And so I was down, I was coming back and it was probably about midnight and I'm on the freeway and I'm kicking along about 60, 65 mile an hour in a truck and I pulled out to pass this other truck and we're like neck and neck we're right beside each other going down the freeway at 65 mile an hour and these deer stepped out in front of the truck and i'll tell you from that experience there is nothing you can do those deer just stepped out in front of the truck and boom just like that anyway got the on the brakes got the truck pulled over the other truck stopped we got out i mean the front of the truck was a mess because i just like ran over them and but there wasn't anything you can do i mean they just flew off the truck there was damage to the front of the truck uh there wasn't a bull bar or anything on the front of the truck uh, for those of you who may not may or may not know a lot of trucks in australia particularly have these bull bars on the front that will protect the front of the truck from damage from hitting animals and those types of things so that was my one experience in michigan of hitting deer at night and it's 
it's like right there. There's nothing you can do. And, and for those of you who may have this experience, you have to decide, you know, because as I was right beside another truck, if I had to try to avoid that, instead of just driving into the deer, I may have risked a collision and we both could have piled up and had a bit huge crash with two tractor trailers on the freeway. The other time I hit animals was in Australia and I hit kangaroos with a bus that did in fact have a bull bar on it. And this was, uh, this was the Canberra run. It came out of Canberra at quarter to four in the morning. It was like 3.40 a.m. So I'm coming out of Canberra, it's dark. And when you come out of Canberra to go to Sydney, Australia, you kind of come out of town. It's a fair bit of drive. It's probably a 10 minute drive out of Canberra and it's a couple of big roundabouts come out of there, get out on the highway and just get it wound up and it's on cruise control. All of the passengers, I was pretty full at that time. I think I had 35 passengers on the bus. They're all just starting to fall asleep. And I, I'm not sure, I think I was on a multi-lane because now I, so I'm on the left side of the road and I must've been in the inside lane for whatever reason, but uh, the kangaroo just right out of the median in the middle of the freeway and right in front of the bus and you know it was the grossest sound because you could hear them going through the undercarriage of the bus but again no time to react you didn't see them until they're in the headlights because there's very little peripheral night you know there's no lights over there to be able to see that so when they come in laterally it's very difficult to see them so there wasn't anything I could do about it but in terms of devices there are some of those whistles that you can get that that you can mount on the front of your vehicle I don't really know whether they work. I don't know whether some of the smart drivers here might have had some experience with them, but I have heard, had people say to me that yes, in fact, they do work because what they do is the wind goes through these whistles and then they do that high pitched uh, frequency that only dogs and other animals can hear. So that can help you out as well. Now, the other technique that I put in place at night to avoid hitting animals is to follow other vehicles. If I'm following other vehicles, if I can see another vehicle down the road, four or five, a mile ahead of me or whatnot, then I know that they're kind of clearing the way for me in terms of animals. But in my experience of hitting animals, there isn't anything you can do about it. There's very little you can do. I mean, sometimes you can look down the road and you can see the eyes, you know, the, the, the light gleaming off their eyes and those types of things. But for the most part, I haven't had that experience. So uh, maybe some of the other smart drivers have had experience with animals on the roadway at night and those types of things that you could sort of share with us and give us some information. So let me know. Okay, uh, ADCO, when blinded by high beams and oncoming traffic, focus on the white line. Yes, on the fog line on the outside, that's excellent, ADCO. Uh, Mike, night vision goggles wouldn't help when the lights from other cars hit you. Yes, that's true. Singh, learned a lot from your videos, got my G license in Ontario. Thank you, it meant a lot. Excellent, Singh, I'm so glad that we could help you out there. Nomina, military devices, I think they are most advanced, like glasses to see clearly in the night. Uh, that the one that will see an infrared light. Okay, <laughs> Nomina, I'm not sure you can wear night vision glasses while you're driving a vehicle. I uh, just, I'm not sure that that big, <laughs> all that technology on your head is gonna help you out. I think there's enough reflective surfaces along the roadway that are, that are gonna be able to, you can pinpoint to help you out. The other uh, piece that I didn't talk about is road signs. Road signs are often either overhead the lane or they're very close to the shoulder of the road. So you can use road signs, excuse me, because they're reflective and you can use those as a marker as well to determine where you are on the roadway, okay? Okay, fierce jaws, night driving is the best. I drive over the road truck at night as much as I can. Yes, and jaws, I would definitely concur with that. I used to drive truck a lot at night as well. Uh, because there were just fewer passenger vehicles and you could just make a lot more time at night, especially on freeways. It's very easy to drive on freeways at night because you know, you got multi lanes, lots of ambient lights, street lights, and those types of things at curves and those kinds of things, uh, on ramps and off ramps. There's lots of signs. So it's very easy to be able to see all of that stuff. Uh, saying now I'm planning to get my truck license. Have you posted all the videos for clearing truck license? Uh, not all of them sing, but there are a lot here that will help you out. And one of the ones you want to look at probably to get started is the shifting theory video. Corey will get that up for you. Have a look at that and that'll get you started in terms of night driving. All right. Okay. Okay. So we talked about all of that. 
Now, the other thing I want to elaborate a little bit more on is... Excellent. Okay, so Royal Rooter, how are you? Uh, okay, so Dawn is here. They do have night vision glasses for those who have night blindness. Now, uh, Dawn, can you just define night blindness for me? Okay, so uh, those of you just tuning in here, if you're new to Smart Drive Test, Smart Drive Test helps new drivers get a license, veteran drivers to remain crash free, and CDL drivers to start a career as a truck or bus driver. So if you're new here, consider subscribing as well. Hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down in the comment section, and share around the videos and those types of things all of that helps us out to help new drivers get a license and veteran drivers to remain crash free and cdl drivers to start a career as a truck or bus driver and uh defensive driving course the smarter driver course is on sale over at the smart drive test website look down in the description there it's on sale for 17 dollars regular 4250 and that will give you lots of strategies tips and techniques and information for you to remain crash free and drive safely in inclement weather when it's raining at night all of these things that we're talking about today that are going to help you out and keep you safe on the roadway especially after you get your license for those of you who just got your license i would strongly encourage you to take the defensive driving course uh the smarter driver course to remain safe and keep yourself and your family safe at night <laughs> okay Muhammad, I did hit a deer last month in Illinois. I just hit it and slowed down my speed slowly and stayed in my lane and then shifted on the shoulder. Main thing is don't panic and don't do any hard maneuvers. And that's exactly it. That's excellent advice, Muhammad. Do not do any aggressive maneuvers uh, when something happens in the car, especially when you hit an animal. I was just talking to one of the receptions at my dental office there last week and they spun out on the roadway in the snow and backed into the ditch. I mean, fortunately, it was just damage to the vehicle that she wasn't hurt. But what had happened was is that she went off the shoulder. She had what's called shoulder drop off. And this used to be a much more prominent problem than it is now. I mean, now a lot of roads have paved shoulders and those types of things. So we've controlled this problem a little bit, but it still happens. What happens is you get the pavement and then there's a gravel shoulder and there's an edge to the edge of to the pavement and people drop off that edge and then they aggressively steer the vehicle back onto the roadway. What happens is, is when you aggressively pull the steering wheel back on, many drivers lose control of the vehicle. And this is another thing that we talk about in the defensive driving course is how to control the vehicle. You know, when it does drop off, just hold the steering wheel and just gently kind of move the steering wheel back on. And we talk about that, uh, not oversteering, just gently bringing it back on, letting go of the throttle, letting go of the brake, and just steering the vehicle in the direction you want the vehicle to go. And that is gonna help you out in terms of driving and maintaining control of the vehicle. So that's an excellent point about not having aggressive maneuvers on the steering wheel. Because the reason that we lose control of a vehicle is over acceleration, over braking, over steering. So, too much steering, too much brake, too much throttle. Anytime that we have one of those things happen with the primary controls, you are going to lose control of the vehicle. So nice and easy. Anytime that you feel the vehicle's starting to go out of control, let go of the brake, let go of the throttle, nice and easy on the steering wheel and steer the vehicle in the direction you want it to go and that will help you to maintain control of the vehicle. Royal Rooter, I always stay in the right lane at night. The majority of wrong way crashes happen at night and most of the time the driver's going the wrong way, stay in the left lane, which uh, would be to their right. Now, that is excellent, Royal, because you're managing space around your vehicle and you're having more space. Now, on a lot of freeways, interstates and motorways, what happens is, is they're gonna have those cement barriers down the middle of the roadway that are gonna prevent uh, vehicle crossover into oncoming traffic and if the other th studies that we've done in terms of road infrastructure is, is that we know that drivers are going to fall asleep every couple of uh, every two hours of driving so you can take this as kind of a benchmark in terms of your own driving if you're doing long trips and long haul and those types of things you want to try and stop every two hours and have a break run around the vehicle go to the toilet get a sandwich cup of coffee whatnot that's when you want to take your break but you, if you start taking notice of interstates and freeways 
and they don't have a median in the middle, you'll notice those concrete barriers between the two lanes of traffic every couple of miles. So if you drive 120 miles, you drive 100 miles, which is a couple of hours of driving, you're gonna find that those concrete barriers are in the middle. And that's a good point that driving over on the right side is gonna give you much more space management. Now, one of the issues with that Royal in terms of driving on the right is, is that if you do have animals that step out from the shoulder, you don't have a lot of buffer on the right side of your vehicle as opposed to the left side. So you gotta kind of weigh up the two dangers. But again, if you're driving in the right side and you're worried about animals on the roadway, those types of things, if you're in a rural or remote area, just follow another vehicle at a mile or something like that and then you know that <laughs> they can they'll be the cow catcher in terms of getting the animals off the roadway uh adco any tips for someone going to the big city like new york city adco uh yes we could that's a whole new uh discussion in terms of driving in big cities but one of the things adco that i would really uh, counsel you to do have a look at the video on navigating and make sure that you know exactly where you're going to go and where you're going to drive to and if you do your work in terms of route planning and navigation before you actually get to the big city that's going to help you out uh, in terms of driving because then you can focus more of your energy on driving I know that we all have GPS units and we all have phones that with audio on them but if you have some of those directions in your head, it's going to help you out when you're driving because you're going to know that when you're going across the GW Bridge, the George Washington Bridge in New York City, and you want to get onto Broadway, <laughs> let me tell you from personal experience that you don't actually get off the bridge to take the exit. And I remember that when I was driving into New York City, I'm driving big truck, and three or four times I went down there, and I finally come back, and I said to one of the other drivers, because I kept missing it, and I had to go up the road, get off one of the interstates, come back, and I ended up somewhere in New York City, didn't know where the heck I was, and I said to one of the other drivers that had been to New York City, I said, how do you get off the George Washington Bridge to get onto Broadway? I said, I, I, I've been down there three or four times, I cannot figure this out. And they said, well, it's the first exit after the bridge <laughs> and finally on the fourth time when I went to New York City and I went to get off on the exit I realized that the exit wasn't after the bridge the exit was still on the George Washington Bridge <laughs> so you didn't even get off the George Washington Bridge before you took the exit that you needed to take to get on to Broadway in Manhattan so there's one of the things that you need to do in terms of your uh, route planning and navigation when you're driving in and around big cities because you want to try and focus on your driving as much as possible because there's going to be a lot of stuff going on there. All right. Uh, Darcia, driving at night in New York City is terrifying. Yes. Uh, however, there's lots of ambient light. There's lots of other traffic around. So follow the other traffic, follow the look at, you know, the street lights and signs and those types of things. And yes, I know that there is a lot going on in New York City when you're trying to drive there at night. So just take a breath, look for all the landmarks that you can to be able to drive and, you know, do your route planning and navigation. And that way you're gonna be able to focus more on your driving as you're driving at night in New York City. Uh, night blindness is also called nyctalopia. It is a type of vision impairment. People with night blindness experience poor vision at night or in dimly lit areas. Oh, excellent. Thanks, Don. I'll, um, I'll have a look at that and uh, uh, see if I can come up with some strategies and skills for you because I know there's a, a lot of good information. I'll do a bit of research on that for you. <laughs> Nomina, George Washington Bridge could be hard to find the right way. Yes, it, it was challenging, no doubt about it. I, re I can remember that so vividly, trying to get off there and go get on to Broadway in a big truck. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mo, I'm new here following your channel. I'm learning to drive in New York City. It's crazy, but... I like it so I can drive in Florida when I visit my father in Florida. Your videos are helpful. Thanks a lot. You are most welcome. I'm so glad that we can help you learn to drive there in New York City. And if you can learn to drive in New York City and drive around New York City and in the outer boroughs, driving in Florida is going to be a piece of cake. Even in Tampa, you know, um, I'm trying to think of the city in the north. Tallapoosie? No, that's not right. 
Jacksonville, Miami, those types of places is going to be a lot easier for you to be able to do all of that in Florida. If you can drive in New York City, you can drive just about anywhere in the United States, especially in Los Angeles and Chicago and those types of places. The one place in the United States that actually I found it the most difficult to drive was Boston. And for those of you who are not familiar with the geography of Boston, there's Old Boston, which is Colonial City Boston, which is inside the Inner Ring Road. And I've been there delivering furniture because when I drove truck, uh, it wasn't like a lot of people who were pulling general freight. I was pulling furniture. I was hauling office furniture for Steelcase. So we ended up in the downtown core. We ended up in Manhattan. We ended up in Long Island City in New York. Uh, we ended up in downtown Boston because we were delivering office furniture. And it, once you get inside the inner ring road in Boston, uh, I've driven down streets where the street just ends and there's a building and you're in a truck with a 53 foot trailer on it and you got to back up because you got you can't get out otherwise. And uh, one time I was in Boston and we got off the ring road at the wrong exit. We ended up down at the tunnel that went out to one of the islands off the coast there. And <laughs> we couldn't go through the tunnel because the truck is 13 feet, 6 inches high. The tunnel's only 12 feet, 6 inches high. This is the other thing for those of you who might be driving tractor trailer into New York City. You can't go through the tunnels because all the tunnels are 12 feet, 6 inches. And your truck, if you're driving, pulling a van, is going to be 13 feet, 6 inches. So back to Boston, we ended up off the exit, and it was the exit that went through to one of the tunnels. We couldn't go through the tunnel. And so we, I go up to the toll booth, and the person in the toll booth says to me, they said, well, you can't go through there, and you got to get out of here because you're blocking traffic. And he, he said, well, you're going to have to back up on the freeway, on the interstate, and then get going again. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, there's no way I am backing a tractor trailer out onto a freeway. And uh, so we're here and I'm looking across. There's kind of a grass median and then there's a toll booth and an exit out on the other side. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, actually, I'm not going to back out on the freeway. I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive across that grass median. And I'm going to go out the, the on-ramp out that way. And so that's, there were two of us actually and the other driver was following me and we get off at the wrong exit. And that's what the two of us did. We drove up over this grass median with these huge tractor trailers, drove back out on the off ramp. And that's what you got to do. I mean, as a professional CDL driver, you have to make decisions sometimes and sometimes you're going to get lost. It happens. It's just part and parcel of your job. And you got to make safe decisions. Don't ever <laughs> back out onto a freeway uh, when you're driving. So that's what happened. Okay. And all about vehicles. Hello there. No, it's all good that you're uh, you're here. That's that's brilliant. Okay. Uh, June. I had the opportunity to drive in upstate New York at night for the first time years ago. It was calming. However, when fog appeared, it was scary, and I had to drive my car very slow. And yes, June. That is another excellent point. Is is that you know you get night driving, and then you get inclement weather. You get a lot of rain. You get fog and those types of things. And for me. Where I live here, if I have to go down to the coast to Vancouver or I go to Vancouver Island where I have a house down there, uh, I have to drive over the connector. Well, I don't have to drive over the connector, but I do drive over the connector between Kelowna, British Columbia, and Merritt, and it's a very high mountain pass. And it's interesting because people call it fog. It's not, it's not fog. It's the clouds in the sky because the mountain is so high and the roadway is such a high elevation that you're driving through clouds. And there is one place on the connector where inevitably at night you come across there and you're driving through the clouds. And it is thick, thick, thick fog. It is the thickest fog I've ever seen. And let me tell you, you are driving pretty slowly when you're driving through that fog up on the top of the connector. So know that as well, that night driving can be compounded and made even harder by inclement weather and I have driven down to the coast and just absolutely pouring down rain at night and it's pretty difficult to see you got to work pretty hard to be able to see and the other thing you can do at night uh, if it is raining to try and help clean the, the windshield is you can get uh, some rain -X and you just add it into the windshield washer fluid on your vehicle and it puts a coating on your windshield that will cause the rain to sheet off the, the windscreen and that will help you with your visibility at night driving in inclement weather. Okay, Epic uh, did numerous night drivings on the interstate highway system like 78 and Easton, Pennsylvania, 
One tip is to follow posted speed limit due to heavy police enforcement at night and center line guide. Yes, yes. Uh, they talk a lot about night driving in the driving manuals. They talk about not overdriving your headlights. What they mean by the term not overdriving your headlights for the purposes of learning how to drive is that you're driving at a speed that you can stop within the distance of your headlights. Now, if you're running on low beam headlights, that's going to be very difficult for you to do. Uh, because low beam headlights only go out about 60 feet, about 20 meters. It's not very far. So you to get your vehicle, if you're doing highway speeds at 50, 60 miles an hour, 80 kilometers an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, it's going to be very difficult for you to get that vehicle stopped in that distance. So it's important that you do not rely solely on your headlights to be able to find the roadway at night. You want to use other uh, landmarks along the roadway to be able to find the roadway so that's one of the other things that you can do okay David I drove through a crazy whiteout but my eyes were moving around like crazy and I was gathering every anything around me to see yes David and that's one of the things that you need to do and when it's a crazy whiteout and you got snow and you're driving at night <laughs> and here's the other thing and this is the point that David just brought up about you know driving at night and it's snowing really hard you can't use your headlights because if you put your headlights on, then it's like, you know, uh, warp speed in a spaceship because you got this, your headlights reflecting off the snow and you see the snow just kind of coming in at you like this and you can't see it all. So you have to rely on your low beams when you're driving and it's snowing out because the low beams will are actually aimed down underneath the snow so it won't be reflecting off the snow and you're able to see. So... As David said, it's incredibly difficult to drive in snow at night because you're relying on your low beams. So you have to be using other landmarks. You have to be using street lights that are along the roadway. You have to be using uh, reflectors that they put on the roadway. Sometimes they'll put those uh, reflectors that are about this deep on the road surface itself. But of course they get kicked off by plows and those types of things and worn out and whatnot. It's like the road markings. The road markings are reflective, but they get worn out as the plows and those types of things go over them. So you have to be looking for the lights along the roadway. You have to be looking for uh, intersections far down the road, looking for other traffic, where the other traffic is along the roadway and following that traffic. And then you have to be looking for road signs along the roadways because know that road signs are going to be along the roadways. They're oftentimes within very close proximity to the roadway or they're over top of the roadway. And again, houses, buildings, those types of things along the roadway will also help you to locate where the roadway is. So all of those landmarks. So we go into all of this night driving a little bit more in depth in the defensive driving course and we go into driving at night in inclement weather how to stay awake and those types of things so consider purchasing that course as i said this week and next week it's on sale for the low price of 17 dollars uh, regular 42.50 so have a look at that and consider purchasing that defensive driving course and stay safe and keep your family safe as well and you know reduce your chances of being involved in a crash uh David, so piece together an image of the road in my mind and everything went perfect. It was crazy to do that. Well, yeah, sometimes it happens though, David, that we get caught out or we're driving and we, we just we just have to be out on the roadway. So that's going to happen uh, with your, your driving. And it, when you're able to do that, when you're able to drive in inclement weather, it improves all of your overall driving skills and abilities. Because remember that saying, uh, you know, calm seas don't make great sailors in other words only in rough seas only by dealing with unfavorable circumstances are you going to improve your skills and your abilities and the uh, the piece that i talked about at the beginning of the uh night driving video was is that you know we need our night vision most of the information, 75 to 80% of the information that we need for driving is gathered through the eyes. At night, our ability to see is significantly reduced. We can only see about half at night what we can in the daytime. But the roadway infrastructure is designed to help us to be able to see better at night, right? So we're able to see the roadway with the road signs, reflective markings, you know, intersections, street lights at on and off ramps along freeways overhead signs being able to see the sky the night sky through the cut 
in the trees and know whether the road is going to the left or right and then of course following the other traffic on the roadways because for the most part 99.9% .9 of the time other traffic is going to drive on the roadway so you can follow that other traffic and as well animals on the roadway and those types of things at night you know just follow another vehicle at about a mile behind that other vehicle and those types of things and uh, animals won't be on the roadway now I haven't had a great deal of experience other than the two stories that I told you about hitting kangaroos in Australia and hitting deer here I am saying that there are <laughs> uh, animals on the roadway so it is it is a fear factor and I know that in northern Ontario especially moose season <laughs> you got to be careful at night so know that as well and Sam is here Sam with Big Mac uh, Big Mac driving lessons by Big Mac Sam there we go I got that right and Sam is a driving instructor in New York City in the Bronx there with the Rookie Auto Driving School. So if you're in New York City, uh, look up Sam there and get some driving lessons for him and definitely check out his YouTube channel as well. Sam is doing really awesome there. And how did your, I didn't get a chance to tune in Sam, but I did notice your live stream last week. How did your live stream go? Uh, because I know in the beginning those can be a bit trying. <laughs> kind of takes a few tries, a few weeks of before you can kind of get everything worked out. I, I remember mine, I had to upgrade my internet and then I upgraded the RAM on my computer and then finally I just bought a new computer and you know, working out all the kinks and those types of things and trying to work out the lighting. Uh, my whole studio situation now is more or less kind of kind of stationary, but it's, it's all here, so. Uh, Mr. Green, I uh, just drove and it's nighttime. I was a little upset because I have a fear of people crossing in front of me and people in, pulling in front of me any advice yes uh, mr. green you want to look down the road as far as you can because uh, you know so that's one thing so you want to look as far down the road as you can because at night you can see vehicles at a greater distance because uh, it's lights from a moving vehicle are going to be very different than stationary lights so you're going to be able to see other traffic spe specifically cross traffic and whatnot and the other thing is if you if you're thinking that a vehicle is going to be cutting in front of you like on a on a freeway or an interstate or something like that then essentially what you want to do is you want to have uh, better control of your space around your vehicle so you want to maintain a good following distance uh, you know three to four seconds maybe even five seconds at night that way you're not going to be in other people's space and those types of things and you know don't track somebody in on multi-lane freeway so if you're going down the road and then there's a car beside you you know either speed up and get past them or let off the throttle and let them go ahead of you and those types of things it's just at night it's important that you're scanning well ahead and that you're managing space around your vehicle well so that those are a couple of tips that can help you out in terms of driving at night and staying safe okay Isaiah got my license recently from watching you thank you very much thank you very much for letting us know and if you can Isaiah head over to the smart drive test website and sign up for the 100k campaign that'll help us out and we'll get you going there okay uh, Sam not bad it was in the middle of the day in the middle of the week and not too many people showed up I was trying it out stream was nice I did it from the phone in the bus oh awesome that's great so you did it from your phone yeah I find the phone works fairly well because it, it it streams at a lower resolution so I find that that works pretty well and the other the other thing Sam from my experience I just found you know from doing this for more than a year now that uh, you know just having my live stream at the same time every week on Sundays has just you know people know when it is and uh, it that just kind of helps out too but you know sometimes it's kind of fun to just pop on and start talking to people and see how it goes so yeah congratulations on doing that that that's really great all right so we're getting near the end here just gonna wrap up here so congratulations to all of the smart drivers in the last week or two that have passed their license be sure to head over to the smart drive test website and sign up for the 100k campaign that really helps us out and you could potentially be entered you could be you will be entered in a draw for $100 fuel card and we'll get that going here and get those up and announce the winners and if you're going for a road test in the next week or two be sure to ask us any questions that you might have and good luck with your road test you're going to do awesome and again for all the smart drivers out there that have just got your license consider the defensive driving course the smarter driver course over the smart drive test website uh, you can pick it up now for $17, regularly $42.50. It's on sale. Lots of strategies, tips, and techniques for driving defensively and keeping yourself crash-free. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Thanks very much for watching. 
Good luck in your road test. And remember, picked up the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.